Good morning everybody, it's a Wednesday the 21st of October and um, I'm back with the, since last week I'm back with the weekly video for this morning. Um, I've called it Resilience Wednesday and I think it's, it's really apt because um, you definitely need to build resilience particularly in uncertain times and the you might be thinking, oh, no, not again. But actually, it's vital to have resilience in uh, uncertain times. And as yet again, we are into another week with seemingly getting more and more embroiled in uncertainty. Differences across the country, differences across small communities, all leading to stress and anxiety for nearly, maybe not all, but nearly all individuals. And it's kind of overwhelming. So what can we do about facing and managing these uncertain times? Um, the answer is to be resilient. Resilient people practice being aware of themselves and everything around them and everyone around them. And they don't let negative thoughts hold them back. And I've said it before and I don't make no apologies for repeating, but it's so difficult not to become overwhelmed during these times. Not just the pandemic, but all the lives lost and the continuing uncertainty, um, not just in our country, but across the world. The whole, uh, just the whole system is getting to everybody just now. So you're not alone. I've had lots, I mean, I've been feeling it too. Everybody thinking, oh my goodness, uh, what do we do now? So the first thing to do is to breathe and affirm, just take a second or two just to breathe. The mind is extremely powerful. And I think maybe a group think just now, because group thinks they do work. We don't know what's happening across the world, but if we all had the same feelings, I think we should have, take a deep breath in and then hold and exhale and then just breathe. We are strong, we are resilient. Now, resilience is the ability to bounce back against adversity. You're able to uh, sort of jump over the fences in your mind. You're pushing through the bushes and trees. You're digging tunnels under the walls when things don't go as planned. And people who have resilience, they've got a fight in them to overcome adversity, commitment, control and courage. Don't worry if you think you're not resilient. You can change your mindset and to be more positive by just using simple affirmation. I am resilient. When you do these positive affirmations, you definitely feel better and you can learn to build resilience. But I thought today a sort of different way of thinking about things. I took some time to look at organisations who are facing, who have faced uncertainty and adversity. And also another wee story about the exhibition to ex exhibition, the expedition to Mount Everest. So organisations that are successful um, when they face adversity, they've got well established routines for getting things done. But the ones who are more successful know that these routines are often taken for granted and therefore they've got to um be able to adjust and plan as things happen. And those who are not successful have no plans for such situations and they're suddenly scrambling around making adjustments where they can. Now, uh, uh, even that's probably happening just now. I don't really want to get into politics, but lots of people are seeing uh, this kind of ad hoc view to what's going on is, is our leaders, whether it's in, of the country or other communities, they're saying we need to do this, but do they have an exit plan? Do they know what's going to happen? So um, it's all very well saying, yes, we should all be in lockdown. You know, we can't be in lockdown forever. Um, is it a short term gap? But then people need to know what's happening after that. And I really don't think anyone seems to know. And of course, the the organisations, when you look at organisations that are successful, the lessons to be learned that they have a plan, but they've also got alternatives that can be applied when they're faced with sudden changes. And that's what really were happening just now. Um, the plan will involve, of course, looking back at the routines, looking back at what's been done, but they'll be able to improvise 
and be creative. There's got to be a lot of creative thinking in this, in making decisions, in solving problems quickly and effectively. And of course, as individuals, um, we really need to be relying on ourselves just now. So we need to maybe have these, have the plans in our mind, but be able to adjust. And it got me thinking about, um, it's a real life story. It's about Mount Everest, an expedition to Mount Everest. All those involved in any such expedition, of course, knows there will be challenges. And they also need to prepare for higher levels of complexity, ambiguity, uncertainty, the volatility of what's going on in that kind of environment. And from researching various organisations, um, the uh, this Everest expedition, they kind of had a toolkit and organisations could use this. It was a toolkit built for the Mount Everest expedition. It was the expedition to Kang Shun, it's the Kangshun face. Now, this is the most remote and it's the least explored uh, rock face. And only three teams have completed this successfully in 2020. The teams trained together for two years, so they, they started to get to know each other. They spent time with each other. Um, it was almost, I think, about for just over two months uh, on the mountain to get the feel of it. The three climbers reached the summit with no serious accidents and minimal use of oxygen. So although they did rely on um, routines, on well-known routines suited to that environment, they still faced many unknown challenges. Um, and of course, having these well-known routines helped them. It helped keep them safe and helped them to be efficient. But there was a leader who had the final say, but the leader actually was at the base camp. And of course, when they were facing problems higher up, the the leader at the bottom, the base camp leader, didn't really, he didn't have first-hand knowledge of what was, was going on. So this problem arose when he didn't know enough about what was going on up there to make decisions for these climbers. I thought this story was so apt for these times. So... What the three climbers in the the high up part of the mountain decided to do was they got together, they discussed and they decided that someone had to be a leader of that sort of three team. So they were on the wall of a, this wall of ice and rocks. They'd spent several days there discussing a plan and they decided that one climber, that's the first climber on the rope, would call the shots. And what they did was they were empowering that first climber to make the decisions at any particular time. So they could still communicate this to the leader at the base level, but at least they knew someone up there who had more knowledge of what was going on could make the decisions. But other challenges they faced as well. The final challenge of the climb was unknown to all these three climbers, to these three climbers, and that demanded rapid responses and rapid decisions, or they could be lost, lives could be lost. So there were no routines that they could fall back on at that time, because none of them had been at such a high altitude before, and they didn't know how their bodies would react. So they had to improvise. And this last, the last stage of this mountain climb is known as the Hillary step, requiring them all to be tied together for the climb. And that was for safety. However, having tried this, they realised that the ropes they had were too heavy. So they made an on-the-spot decision to climb separately. Now, whether this was the right decision or not, they wouldn't know at that time. They knew it increased the risk of a serious fall, but it also meant they were likely to finish the ascent. So the decision actually paid off. They were fortunate and the three reached the summit safely. So what did they learn from this experience? How does knowing this help you to build resilience? Well, I felt that it was an important story because it, it shows that it's important to have a plan. Your routine 
But when things happen very quickly, you need to be able to adapt. So in, in these times, we maybe don't have three climbers. We don't have three people in the household. There might just be yourself and you have to make that decision. Um, but it depends on the challenge or the situation. And each decision will differ depending on the challenge you're faced. So you might see the challenge as an opportunity or you might see it as a way to solve the problem an opening there to do that. So you've got to plan as much as you can for every situation, but know that you can't plan for everything. You don't have control over everything. All you have control over is how you act and react to situations. So learn to adapt and be flexible, be open-minded. So I felt that this kind of toolkit, this way of thinking um, could be used in the, these pandemic times, in the crisis just now. Um, the hospitals and the frontline workers, the organisations, they all had to prepare, they had to prepare themselves to cope with new and uncertain situations. So it's a case of almost learning and adapting as they go along. Um, they had to learn to change their routines to match requirements of different scenarios. Now, this isn't an easy, and it wasn't, and it isn't an easy task. And of course, it requires kind of an ongoing problem solving and adjustments. Now, I know that so many people who have other ailments and illnesses, um, we know that there's been, they've kind of stopped maybe making hospital appointments, fright, naturally frightened of maybe um, they might catch COVID or something might happen. But it's very frustrating for the doctors and the frontline workers um, to see that further deaths could be caused. This morning I heard that, in fact, I think there's over a million a, on the waiting list now and they wonder if the NHS will ever catch up. Now, I suppose, again, I was thinking back to the individual. You need to... You have maybe your routine, but you need to kind of think out of the box and think, right, I know friends who have taken the opportunity of the appoint appointments and they have continued. They've been lucky. I hope it isn't a postcode lock lottery that where you stay, you get the, you know, the service that you need. But they have certainly continued with their treatment, which is amazing. And of course, they're very positive in mind. And one of them, she's in her 90s. I've never met anyone so positive. Um, you know, she could run rings around lots of people. So back to you as an individual. You might have a plan, a routine, but as we've seen from this pandemic, no one really has the answers. And uncertainty continues and will continue. So there are some who are pretending, oh, it's not happening. It's, it won't happen to me. It won't affect me. And to me, I think they're maybe very selfish. If they think it's not going to happen to them, then maybe their plan is just stay at home. But they really need to be considering others. It's not a healthy way of dealing with um, uncertainty anyway. If you take this approach, you will face other situations at some time in your life and that they'll take you by surprise and you'll not be able to cope. Um, these I call, the, the tips I'm going to call are resilience practices, which help you confront uncertainty. And it gives you the ability to deal with emotional pain more effectively. Um, and I've, I know this is like a broken record. I've talked about these before, but please take these things on board. They do help. It's why I designed my ABC. They're simple techniques, but really they make you feel better please use them so the first thing tip is change your mindset change the way you view things many of us most of us are overwhelmed at some time in our lives and we're overwhelmed by these times because we're reading we're listening we're watching to the news over and over again it would get to anybody i mean i you know we're we're human we can't just keep listening to negative news and we're reliving the what ifs in our head. Now, if this doesn't move you forward, um, you're kind of stuck in that negative mode. So you need to move forward more positively. Change the way you view things. And I suggest one good way, and it has helped me 
uh, I like writing anyway, but um, and whether I'm the best, I don't know. But I suggest creative writing, writing down your thoughts and feelings. Just get something down on paper. It's not going to be the the um, you're not going to be the author of the year or it's not a war and peace. It's for your eyes only. But it really does help um, writing down um, how you feel about your overall well-being. Look back and reflect. There's studies that, particularly if you do expressive writing or anything creative actually, found that those who did this for even four days were healthier and happier for up to three months later. So imagine if you did this every day. It's another way of coping with uncertainty is to list three positive things that you've learned. And of course, a great one for me is take a walk in nature, even getting the rain on your face. Um, I know I went out, probably walked more when I had the dog and sadly I lost my dog. But if you have an animal, but even if you don't, try and take a walk out in nature. It just it gives you a different perspective on things. <coughs> I'm going to joke here. One thing I meant to say, and I'm going to say it in my podcast, is that when I get passionate about something <clears throat> and people who've uh, listened to me, if they've been at lectures or whatever, I'm like a train and it sort of starts picking up speed and I need to try and sort of calm down. But I just get so passionate. So I talk about changing the way you view things. Um, <clears throat> and certainly the most traumatic thing I experienced, as most of you know now, because I'm happy to talk about it, is not happy about the event, but when I lost my son to suicide, yes, there's. you think life is over, it's terrible, and it is, and I'll never forget him. But you need to, I honour his life by actually viewing this in a different way. I try and think I've got to choose to live a fulfilling and constructive life in his honour. <clears throat> and if you have lost a loved one, that's how you honour them. You never ever forget them. But you've got to think of the wonderful memories and just recreate all of these in your mind and bring out the positives. So another thing I talked about, I think, in previous videos is um, dealing with difficult people, how you respond to difficult people. Now, resilient people choose their response carefully they re remember you've always got choices you've got choices how to respond i mean if you respond with rage to somebody who is angry you're just going to escalate that rage it doesn't get you anywhere so um you're better i know that in the panic you can respond negatively but you're better to remain calm and think rationally and logically and one quick way of doing this is actually take a deep breath or better still take three deep breaths in fact i saw somebody i think in the news this morning in a care home they've asked people to write down some positive sayings and i did like the lady who said think before you ink and of course she's talking about when we used to write things down um just think it's think before you speak as well focus on being optimistic rather than pessimistic try and be the glass full or at least half full not the glass empty um you know how people view setbacks is a vital part of living positively um Face your fears. We all have fears, fears of spiders, fears of flying, fears of public speaking. <clears throat> this is frightening for me as well, you know, but I think, well, you're not, it doesn't matter really how I look. I hope I look okay, but actually it's what I'm saying. I'm trying to support and if you're kind and support others. So you can't sometimes just talk yourself out of these fears, but you need to deal with the emotions that rise out of the fear. And one small step is to slowly and repeatedly expose yourself to what frightens you. So when I first started doing the videos, I was like, oh, how's it going to be? But just gradually it gets slightly better to be able to, I suppose I wanted just to be myself. And I'm finding that quite difficult with the podcast, funnily enough. Although it's audio, it's as if I'm not speaking to anybody. I feel here 
that I'm seeing people, you're coming up and um, I, I don't know actually how to do these things. Do I wave at people? Wave, <laughs> wave, <laughs> wave. There we are, I waved. I don't know um, how sort of these things work. But that is, it's inspiring to me that people are actually sort of listening. Another tip is be kind to yourself. When you're frightened, you feel alone and you think you're the only one feeling this way. And that's what's interesting here in the pandemic. So many people, uh, I get messages from people to say, you know, I'm so overwhelmed and I don't know what to do. You're not alone. We're all feeling like that. So you've got to treat yourself with warmth, with kindness and don't judge yourself. It's kind of OK to be not OK, but not all the time. And using mindfulness practices like my Mind Bites meditations, and I'll do one at the end, they are very effective. And they, they kind of reduce that pain, that emotional pain and stress, and you will feel less overwhelmed. And of course, if you've got difficulty in being kind to yourself, start writing positive words of understanding, kindness and compassion. Resilient people are also empathetic and compassionate about others. They focus on having healthy relationships with others and they don't worry about what others think of them. But of course, that's, you know, if there's constructive feedback from a trusted friend, then they can address this. But don't be unkind to others ever. You can use affirmations again, the quick affirmation. I am kind to myself. I am compassionate to myself. And I know everyone struggles. I know I'm not alone. The short mindfulness exercise, of course, you're breathing. I've said that already. Um, you're using the mind bites. It brings you more and more into the present. It's These ABCs are proven psychological techniques for, de for dealing with negative emotions. So instead of getting worked up, overwhelmed, anxious, angry, frightened then just slow down and take a moment or two to do the a b c a i feel positive b the breathing and then just imagine yourself strong and brave and courageous like a lion whatever animal that suits i love my lions and you can do this regularly i'd like you to have these as your good habit because then actually it'll help you no matter what situation you're in you know, you can get angry if you're out at the shops, you're angry if you're in the car, things are frustrating you, just take a deep breath and just, you'll get there. You know, how many times have you driven and somebody's trying to cut in in front of you and they're pushing up and then you get to traffic lights? Where are they? One car in front of you. Where has it got them? So just slow down and use these ABC techniques. Eating also in a mindfulness way, it's something that probably was quite difficult. As I was growing up, you were kind of um, particularly sent away to school. So you're trying to munch through your dinner quicker than anyone else to get to the playground or whatever. Um, but um, it's kind of a Buddhist, I suppose, routine. But actually, if you try this, try taking like a raisin, just a small, tiny thing and uh, it's they say it's like 40 chews to every bite and you think that would be impossible with just a reason but a mindfulness exercise is actually to take anything and i'm choosing a reason because it's small but before eating it look at it closely feel it smell it notice everything about it and then Hold it in your mouth. Now, the instinct is to swallow it immediately, but try just holding it and feel it in your mouth. And you're probably salivating at the moment, thinking, God, I need my breakfast. I need my mid-morning cup of tea. But just try that. It's a superb mindfulness exercise because we just rush around. We rush around with everything. We're rushing down our food and I know it's difficult to do. And if you're that if you're in the frontline workers and out there, yes, you need to be rushing around probably all day. No time to think about yourself. But please take a moment or two in the evening or when you have a break just to think ab about yourself. It's not being selfish. So the tips from earlier videos, you can go back and look at them, view the challenges, opportunities. Um, have your inspiration and your achievement board. I hope you've got that. 
or a notebook or something that you're committing yourself to life and what you want. You're looking at what you've achieved. It really makes you feel good. We tend to forget about this because we're sometimes just too modest, modest actually. So, and you've got to kind of look at what you believe in. Are these your beliefs or the beliefs of others? And focus always on things you can control. When you worry about things you can't control, you just start to feel helpless and powerless. So why do that? And remember, you can only change yourself. You can't change other people. Don't let your bad events affect, you know, affect yourself. It's uh, when you're res resilient, um, you don't blame yourself for every bad event that happens. Um, and that's like, stop this, what ifs, why me? Um, but remember that if you are responsible for something, you've got to be accountable for the consequences. Yes, we all have rights. I've mentioned this before. Drives me crazy. People say, I've got a right. I've got a right. I don't need to wear a mask. I don't need to do this. I don't need to do that. I think it's a selfishness. I think you really need to be thinking um, about the, you know, the consequences of your actions for others, not just you. Um, don't hold grudges. Being able to forgive is beneficial. That's really good for your mental and physical health. And of course, you can listen to I've got a letting go of anxiety and stress um, podcast. Learn, learn, learn. We all make mistakes. I'm human. I make, probably made more mistakes than anyone. But please learn from them. That's if you don't learn, you'll be sent another challenge until you do learn. And of course, the greatest challenges to me have given me my greatest strengths. Have the courage to follow your dreams, even risking failure. Um, never give up, never quit. That's what resilience is all about. Bouncing back and having the courage to learn. When you're resilient too, you don't blow things out of proportion. And I think that's what the negative news is happening just now. We're hearing, oh, there's a thousand deaths. Oh, there's a million. Oh, there's this. Oh, there's that. And suddenly, um, you, you just everything's blown out of proportion. A good friend who I absolutely loved working with him was a statistician. And sadly, he is no longer with me. He passed away. But he had a wonderful way of seeing... If the statistics always look, have a look and see, you know, 100% of people did. And then when you actually look at the statistics, they maybe looked at 40 people. Now, if there's 40 million in a group and you've looked at 40 people, that statistic is really not sort of worth anything. So have, be careful when you're looking at statistics. And I, I still say kind of keep away from all these kind of negative things. Remember then it's good to have plans and routines but always have the ability to adapt and be flexible. And resilient people know that change happens and they know that even if they've made goals, they need to be able to amend these and even scrap some when required. So today, the, the Mind Bites meditation I'm going to do, I'm going to do the changing seasons one because nature changes. Nature has the ability to adapt. And the, the Changing Seasons Mind Bites is excellent for resilience and flexibility. So I felt it was very apt for today. Um, and I'm kind of on target too for completing my third book at a kind of three book deal. And this one I've called, I didn't know what to call it, but I've decided to call it Changing Seasons of Life. And the, it's a book of prose um, stories very abstract stories. I'm kind of an abstract creative writer. Um, but I'm hoping that when you read these stories, you can read into them. And actually, it's to bring out the creativity of your mind. I also have um, poems from a fabulous a uh, young lady, Danielle, Danielle McGregor, whom I met many years ago um, when I was uh, tutoring at the Open University. And we've remained friends and uh, it's just been wonderful. She has a particular talent for doing poetry. So there'll be some of her poetry in the book as well. So that's something hopefully maybe for Christmas. Um, so back to today, I think we'll finish with the Mind Bites 
meditation called changing seasons so as always it just takes a couple of minutes but uh, and if you've got time to listen later to this uh, please do so so feet on the ground ground yourself back straight so you feel confident but kind of semi-relaxed but really feel good and i want you to close your eyes and you're going to i'm just going to take a deep breath in through the nose hold and then exhale now when you need to face challenges calmly this is an excellent mind bites it's a wonderful mindful meditation so with your eyes closed and just listen to my voice imagine yourself in a lovely garden There are beautiful flowers all around. Take a moment to admire the glorious colours, the beauty of nature. Imagine your favourite flower. Smell the scent. Feel the softness of the petals. Now imagine the garden in the changing seasons. Spring. Nature coming alive. Warmth is in the air. Sunlight opens the buds, the leaves and the flowers. Summer arrives. The heat of the sun shines down on the flowers, opening their petals to face the sunlight and the warmth. Autumn arrives and the leaves turn from luscious green to pale gold, then dark red. Autumn leaves fall from the branches and winter arrives, covering the ground with a dusting of snow. Imagine nature in all its glory throughout these seasons. Now take a deep breath in through the nose. Hold and then exhale. Take another deep breath in through the nose and imagine the different seasons and the colours flooding through your mind and body. Now slowly open your eyes and say, I feel more positive in body and mind. I feel confident. I am resilient. I know I can face changes calmly with confidence. And then just relax, relax the shoulders, yawn or stretch your arms just to bring yourself back into the now. Now that's just a short meditation but really all these are sent to just make you feel better within minutes. And thank you again for watching and uh, spread the word please about my videos and I've got Mind Circles podcast. I'm doing these weekly on well-being topics. And of course, if you have any topics you would like me to talk about um, in my videos or my podcast, please private message me or email me pat at mindcircles.co.uk and just 
it's inspiring and motivating for me to have everybody that's listening and watching to me and that's uplifting for me. So have a resilient day and I'll do another wave. Is that to Carol? <laughs> thank you very much. So thank you, Bas, Alan, Carol, um, lots of people watching this morning. Thank you very much indeed and have a fabulous day. I'll be back next Wednesday and uh, it's just weekly at the moment. Hopefully we don't go into serious lockdown. I might have to start doing them daily, but weekly at the moment. And uh, thank you again. And remember virtual hugs to everybody. A smile costs you nothing and laughter is the best medicine. Thank you.